Hi, this is Stacey from The Advisor. I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. It is our gentleman today. Our special, special, special guest is Dimitri Morales. And he is here today to speak about the divine, how to incorporate the spiritual connection into our lives to enhance our lives. And if you do have a spiritual connection, how you can actually make it stronger and how you could actually use it to better yourself and better your life. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency that works with small business companies. They don't believe in, in having businesses get scammed by large marketing corporations. They like to focus on the small businesses and help them grow so they can financially afford it and be able to become the business that they always dreamt of becoming. Now back to our special guest, Dimitri Morales. I, I am very excited to have you on the show. Now tell everybody a little about what you do. And, you know, and I just, I'm very excited because this is something that I have a deep interest in. Well, thank you for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, um, I, I'm a spiritual teacher, might be the simplest way of putting it. Uh, I write, I co-author books with Barbara Martin, we started a nonprofit called Spiritual Arts Institute where people can learn about metaphysics. It's a real study. It's kind of like learning a language or learning a musical instrument. You really have to get you. The more you do it over time, the better you get at it. Right. We really appeal, I think, mostly to people that have had a spiritual awakening of some type. Mm -hmm. They know there's something beyond the physical, but they're not sure maybe quite what it is, or they're already starting to explore. And this is an opportunity to kind of dive in it more deeply. We also have others that have been on the path for decades, and they find this work also appealing, because there's always more knowledge to gain. You know, I, I've been in this work now almost 40 years, and I'm still a student too. It's always something, something more to explore. Uh, and it covers a vast array of topics. But Essentially, our help is what we would, our motto at the Institute is helping souls grow. So the goal is to help you evolve your soul, to develop your soul's potential. If you've had the spiritual calling, we say that's the divine knocking on your door. Everyone is, earth is like a schoolhouse and everyone here, in a sense, through their life experiences are already growing. But when you've had the calling, it means you can take what we call the accelerated path, a more the more focused path, and this can accelerate the, the growing process. And it's it's a joy to work with. There's so many things you can do and learn. One of the foundations is we work a lot with the auric field. The meditations we do are based on bringing spiritual energy into the aura. It's sort of the fuel of your evolution. Uh, the co-founder, Barbara Martin, is one of the world's leading aura specialists. And our books are all illustrated with kind of clairvoyant observations of either the spiritual worlds or the auric field. And it's, again, a chance to really dive into who are you really? You know, yes. we are learning we're not really our body, right? Our body is kind of like a car. You know, right. we need to drive around and do the things we need to do. I mean, you and I are talking to each other because I can hear you, you can hear me through your physical body. But the essence of who each of us are is the soul, which is not material. Right. So in a sense, we have to refine, rediscover the inner us, the real us. And then life starts to take on more meaning. It starts to create more motivation. You find you have a lot more drive, a lot more excitement in life because you're more connected to life. Right. And life feels a little humdrum or repetitive or hopeless or any of that all that really means is you've gotten a little out of alignment with the core of what life is right. and you've gotten distracted by the cares of the world shall we say rather and all you really need to do is go back to center find that core and then things start to bloom we had a lady at one of our workshops she was asking one time you know i'm i debate now how much time do i give to my spiritual life how much time do i give to my earth life yeah and we have earthly concerns, we have careers, families, you know, finances, we have all the things of this earth. But the question revealed she wasn't actually seeing it correctly. Right. There is no earth life and spiritual life. It's all spiritual. Mm -hmm. And once you see everything in your life, even the things that are not labeled spiritual, your relationships, your family, your finances, if you when you see all of this as part of the spiritual journey, 
then everything starts to come together and you start to see things in a very different light. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think it's really important that people understand that we're all spiritual. A lot of times people see a gray box and they can't see out of that gray box. You know, what they see is what they think that's all that exists. But it, right. we, we go we go so further and so much more deeper than that. And maybe you can dive into and explain to people that it's it's not just earth and what we see around us, that there's so much more out there. And, you know, maybe you could explain what's out there and, and how that could benefit us and how it can improve our lives. Well, it's interesting, Stacey, because of course, now we do understand the physical world better than ever, right? We have right. more understanding on the grand scale, the cosmic level, and on the microscopic scale, the, the tiny level. And this is, of course, a tremendously good thing. But it has mesmerized some people thinking, well, because I know all this, this must be all there is. Right. We're just atoms kind of bouncing around. That's all it is. And this is all kind of happy, go lucky, you know, random chance. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Yes. So the, what we have to realize is the under, a better understanding of the physical universe, in a sense, demands mm -hmm. a better understanding of the spiritual universe. Right. And the whole idea of metaphysics after the physical is saying that everything you see here in physical life was born from the spiritual life right. this is what we call a result world it's the created world it came from a creative realm mm -hmm. and the challenge is the cre uh, the physical realm because it was created and sustained by the spiritual it's constantly receiving in a sense taking from the spiritual yes. in the same way the spiritual is constantly giving, right? So when we get too materialistically minded, we become selfish because we keep thinking, well, what else can I get? What else can I get? How do I accumulate? Yes. If someone's very spiritual, we tend to think of them, well, they're kind of selfless. They're not thinking about themselves. They're giving of themselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we got to get more in that giving, but also balance it because we are on physical earth. There's a reason we're here. This is not an accident. Right. So we have to handle the things in our life that we're dealing with. But if you do it from the spiritual perspective, things will change. For example, let's take money. Let's take prosperity. Yeah. We're all concerned about that, right? We all mm -hmm. think it's, oh, it's how much money have I got in the bank? Yes. You know? But if you look at it from the aura, prosperity has nothing to do with what's in the bank. Right. Prosperity is a state of consciousness. Yes. And if you are in that consciousness then wealth will manifest. And it even has an energetic color. It comes through as a turquoise light. So people that have a lot of turquoise in their aura have the ability to understand inherently these laws of prosperity. If they don't, it doesn't mean you can't create it. It just means you've got to build it. Some people are not very good at it. You know, I yeah. met a lady once, she, she went bankrupt. She said, oh, I, I totally misuse money. I had no idea how to handle it. Mm -hmm. and she got, you know, to the point of bankruptcy, not a penny in her pocket. And she said, that's it. I'm going to learn this. And she got so good at it. She became a professional in the financial arena, became very successful. And this was especially helping those that were like in the situation that she was in. It right. was a skill to learn. But that yeah. starts with consciousness. As you build that, it will happen. When I first, uh, I met, you know, Barbara's a generation older than me. And I started as her student, and when I was first learning these principles, I was in the showbiz world. I was right. doing movies and TV and things like that. And it's kind of a feast or famine world. Sometimes you're working all the time, nonstop, or you're not working at all. And I was in one of the not working moments. And in her casual way, she looked at me and saw my aura. And the heart area here, the heart chakra, we call it the hermetic center. Yes. That's the energetic nucleus of your outer world activities, everything going on in your life is radiating an energy from this point. I call it the grand central station of the aura because yeah. there's so much energy going in and out. Well, she was kind of pointing there and said, oh, there's a lot of turquoise there. Now, at the time, I was not working, right? But literally two weeks later, I got the most lucrative film job I'd ever gotten up to that point. Wow. It was in the aura. The energy of it to make it happen was there. It just hadn't quite shown up yet. Right. So we have to do, we have to start from the inside out. And as you build up that power and consciousness and do the things you need to do, I was doing all the things you need to do to 
quote unquote, get a job. Yeah. You know, but it's the combination of the two, because sometimes we're pursuing work, but in our mind, we're saying, oh, I'll never get it. I'll never. We're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot as we're doing it. Right. <laughs> Yeah. And then we're wondering why we're not getting what we want, you know. Right. Or yeah. We date somebody and we go out and date, say, oh, no one will ever like me. You know, you're 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 counterproductive. You've got to bring both together and then you'll have the success you seek. Right. Now, how how do we do that? Like for, for people that want to enhance their lives and they want to, because I also believe that the heart is the grand central station. You know, it's more powerful than the mind. You know, I believe that the messages come from the heart and then go to the mind and then the mind releases the messages to the body. But I believe like, just like you said, the heart is the main central station of, of our bodies, you know, and the core of our energy. And for people, you know, who want to start connecting with their, with their energies and their chakras and learn how to understand themselves on a more spiritual basis, how do they begin for the beginners? Where do they, you know, how do they start enhancing their lives spiritually? Right, right. Well, first of all, of course, the desire to do it, right? Yes. No one can push you into this work. Right. No one can make you have a spiritual awakening. It sort of happens to you. And interesting, you were saying this about the heart, because again, in, in, in the aura, the the soul, the energetic nucleus of the soul is the heart. So mm -hmm. what's happening is, so by 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 the soul being here, every experience we're going through, right? The experience of it, the actual going through it is registering here. And that's actually how the, the soul learns by experience. Yes. So what happens is I can say right now, oh, I need to be more patient. It didn't even take me a second to say that. Yeah. I can spend the next 20 years actually learning to become patient. Right. But by the way, 20 years are well spent because it was an idea very quick to, to think, but then until it becomes part of the soul, I have to go through these experiences of what? Practicing patience. Even when oh, I want to do this right now, no, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient. Be, you know, it may not be easy at first until yeah. you get good at it. Right. Think about it. For example, we had a lady. This is not, uh, uh, she had a fear of crossing physical bridges, you know, in her car. Let's say it was a, it was a palpable fear. Yeah. And she had to cross three bridges to get to work every day. Oh, wow. For the therapists, right? Because this was a serious, this wasn't a little thing. This was like heart pounding, sweating kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I guess there was no other way to work. I don't know why, you know, but <laughs> she wanted to conquer it. And then the meditations she was doing for about, now it didn't happen right away. It took about three or four months. Yeah. But one day I went to work and I didn't even realize I'd crossed those bridges. It was not even an issue anymore. So that's how you try to, that's when you know you've conquered something. It's not even an issue anymore. Yeah. Again, the foundation of, of our work is meditation and prayer. Yeah. It starts with that. If we if we are these spiritual beings, you we got to get in touch with that spiritual part of us. And we do it through meditation and prayer. Now, those are actually two different and complementary activities. Yes. In our meditations, we actually do call them meditative prayers because we're mm -hmm. doing both. Prayer is the petitioning. It's the reaching out. It's the connecting with the divine. To yes. realize there is not only a greater universe, but a greater intelligence yes. that we can access. And then meditating is the actual receiving of it, the opening up. And we will receive according to our willingness to receive. Right. Sometimes we don't want to receive. Because it, what we're getting is not what we want to hear. Yes. We had a lady once, I'll never forget this, in a consultation. I don't know what she was hoping for, but <laughs> she was having an affair with a married man, right? And she was asking advice. And the advice was ended. It's not good. Mm -hmm. She was so angry. So <laughs> I didn't have to come here to hear this. My father could have told me this. <laughs> no, right? She, it was the only time someone actually walked out of a consultation. <laughs> she wasn't ready to hear she wasn't ready to hear i, I remember thinking at the time well maybe your dad was right all along girl. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe she thought oh oh you're you're you're, you're the soulmate you know you've known each other for 12 you know who knows what she was hoping to hear yeah this is the thing remember the divine isn't always going to give us what we want right mine is going to give us what we need yes 
rather than asking, oh, what do I want? What do I want? You really want to say, what's best for me? What right. will be best for all around me? How can I better serve the divine plan? And when you do that, then things really start to flow. It's too much, too many times we really are too engrossed in ourselves. You know, even, even with a, a wanting a romantic partner or something, we're thinking, oh, I want this out of a person, this, this, this. Well, what, what about what you're giving? Well, I mean, it's not just about you. You're talking about a relationship. Yeah. And interestingly enough, in the aura, it shows if there is a compatibility. What we emphasize a lot in relationships is you want somebody energetically compatible to you. Right. You may be attracted to someone, but it's not compatible and there's going to be friction, you know, mm -hmm. but if the energies blend, then you're going to have a great relationship. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. And I like how you said it's not always what we have to get out of ourselves. It's not always what we want. You know, it's, it's what we need, you know, right. what the divine wants us you know we have to ask them what we need and let them steer us in the right direction exactly you know? in our prayers we do an invocation we say exactly that at the very end of it we say i ask to receive that which i need and that which i need to know now mm -hmm. and that's a key phrase because if if it's school if earth is a school you know you don't go to school just to grab everything in the school and say i want this this and this yeah you go to school to learn and you're going right. to go to learn things you don't know yes. if you know them then you don't need to be in school exactly I don't, add. I don't need to be in this class mm -hmm. all right calculus now <laughs> <laughs> so the whole idea is to stretch yourself beyond your comfort zone that's another key if you're a little bit too much in your cozy zone yeah and you know you want people that think like you all the time and you want situations that are to that's not you know how do you strengthen your body physically through resistance? You you start wear you know using weights that are what heavier than what you used before, yeah. So that the muscles get stronger. So even if it's a simple thing, get out of your comfort zone. Okay, stop going the same way to work this time. Take a different way. Just get that mind kind of you know thinking in fresh terms, right? And that way you'll you'll you you know the mind is like a muscle, and like any muscle, it must be exercised. And it has nothing really to do with age. You know, you can keep exercising that muscle throughout your life. But the minute you stop doing that and you get set in your ways, then, you know, things start to kind of atrophy and solidify. And then you become rigid and less open to new ideas and all of that. You know, one of the joys of youth is things aren't so settled yet, right? You're willing yeah. to try new things. You, you don't have a long history about something. So it's easy for you to experiment. But we've got to be young at heart, even if we're 90 years old, because if you're not willing to try new things, even at 90, yeah, you're going to keep it fresh. I, I agree totally. And I I also, you know, I feel like intuition is is a way of the divine speaking to us. Yes. I, I I believe that, you know, a lot of times, you know, we have guidance every day and we from the divine yeah. and they speak to us and, and some people are more in tune with what, you know, what the signs are. And mm -hmm. some people, you know, tend to either, you know, not listen or they right. just don't acknowledge right. because they're not connected. And how do you right. feel about that? And what's your, what's your impact? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. You said it beautifully. Uh, there's a, a saying in the Talmud, for every blade of grass, there's an angel bending over saying, grow. We are not doing it ourselves. Right. And just like you said, every day we're getting inspired means it's coming from a place greater than ourselves, not from right. within ourselves. Yes. And if, if the divine is blessing us every day, now, again, it may not be the theory of relativity every day, but it's it's something that we need at that time. It's exactly what you said. The first thing you want to ask is, do I feel inspired? Yes. And if the answer is no, and inspiration is coming to you on a regular basis, it means, well, why are you not opening up to it? Right. What is what is clouding the picture here? If mm -hmm. you know, it's like I'm I'm constantly trying to call you, and then you say, Dimitri, how come you come you come call me in two weeks? I've been calling you every day. Mm -hmm. And then you put your phone, oh, I see all the messages now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So we have to open up to it. We have to permit it to come in and we can't condition it. You know, again, if you go to the higher and you say, again, say you would like somebody in your life and you're saying, 
well, should I do this or this to get that person divine? Which should I do? Right. Well, we've already we've already shot ourselves in the foot because right. we've conditioned the question. We should open it up. We should say, okay, this is someone I would like in my life, but is it thy will? Is it going to serve the best of us? Is it part of our plan, not just for me, but for them? Yes. And if there's no, and you say, okay, I'm willing to let it go. If you're not willing, this is the idea of putting something on the altar of the divine. You're taking it out of your own hands mm -hmm. and letting a higher power come in to guide you. You're still making your own decisions. You're, it's still free will. You're still going to say yes or no to something. Yes. But if you think of it as a cooperative process and that the intelligence you're calling upon is greater than yourself mm -hmm. and also not here to do it for you. There's no like, oh, here's the whole roadmap. Oh, all the way over here. It's like they give the next step. Say, Dimitri, cross that door. I'm asking about my job. What does that door have to do with my job? Yes. You know, okay, what should I do with my job? Cross that door. I'm asking about my job, you know? And then finally say, maybe I ought to cross that door. <laughs> you yeah. know, I can't see that. <laughs> and bingo, we discover something new that we didn't before. I, when I first again met Barbara, you know, that I've been working with so many years, I had many, I was in a very different profession and I had many decisions to make and I was trying to figure it out. And finally, I was kind of a little proud of myself. I think I got in. So finally, you're getting the inspiration they've been giving you for God knows how long. Yeah. You know? So yeah, we, we have to use our beautiful intellect. We're not saying not to do that, but lead with inspiration and then follow up with intellect. Many times we go the other way around. We make the yes. intellect God. We try to intellectually figure it all out instead of realizing that's not the intellect's job. The intellect's right. job is to take the inspiration and then put it into a practical application. Right. You talked about intuition. That is also essential because intuition appears irrational, but it really isn't. And in, in our terminology, intuition is not your instinct. It's not your subconscious. It's not your psychic nature even, or your mm -hmm. emotional nature. And certainly it's not your intellect. It is an unconscious spiritual perception. Right. And what I mean by this is, <clears throat> let's say you walk into a room and there's this beautiful energy, this golden light, let's say, in the room. Yes. Now, you're clairvoyantly seeing it, but it's there. But your spirit eyes are still picking it up. And so you're going to have this unconscious feeling, oh, I love it here. Mm -hmm. I can't say why. It's not that glamorous a house, but I love it here. Right. Because you're picking up the energy. In the same way, you could be going to a palace and you walk in and let's say there's this horrible energy in there. Something terrible happened there. Right. And you don't know why, but something repels you. Same thing. Now, you may say, come on, this is crazy. It's a great place. Just we poo-poo it. But the point is, if you don't really need to be there, what are you doing there? Right. Barbara had a friend and she liked to collect antiques and she's... She snagged this, you know, like museum grade Ding, uh, Ming Dynasty chair that mm -hmm. was from the royal court. And she was so proud of it, right? And she put it prominently in her house. And this woman was also quite intuitive. And she said, you know, every day I'm feeling more and more uneasy. Something is not right. Oh, really? And yeah. And she first she couldn't figure out what it was. And she realized it was a chair, right? And then um, Barbara came over and went into her mystical mode and so oh my god i picked up that whoever sat in his chair was either some type of emperor high up and ordering people to their deaths it was an execution chair oh wow and here we were what four five six hundred years later and those vibrations were still in that chair they cleared it but she sold the chair <laughs> <She didn't> want... <laughs> i think i would have sold it too <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't care what dynasty it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it shows you again, vibration is there. And the, the beauty is once you trust your intuition, mm -hmm. of course, it gets stronger, because now you're relying on it more. Right. And you poo poo it, the more you're getting there. Like you said, you're more you're tuning out of the divine. So the whole idea is to get into it. Now, sometimes we, we goof it up, we think it's the divine, but it was really us. Right. Oh, this person, it's the divine saying is supposed to be in my life. And you see, it's just they're just enamored by them. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you find out it doesn't work out so well. And then what you should do at those moments is question yourself. Okay, I thought it was this, but start to recognize the signals when it's really just you talking. Right. You know, 
people think intuition or inspiration has to be the big booming voice in the sky thou shalt not you know like moses on mount sinai or something <laughs> <laughs> john hessen did a great job there right yes <laughs> i heard he actually uh, one of the reasons the system of the mill picked him is he looked like the depiction of moses by michelangelo oh really look at the profile there's a similarity yeah. okay hessen's got the job <laughs> on the horns, but it was there but the point is, um, inspiration, intuition often starts as the still small voice within. Right. It means you've got to quiet the mind, which also tells you if you're constantly worried, constantly upset, oh, the world is falling apart, all the gloom and doom scenarios, the sky is falling, all these things, you're not going to hear the divine talking to you and you're going to get entrapped by all these worries. And of course, you're going to feel like life is futile. Right. You're not connecting with life. You're connecting... Yes the worries and all the other things around you yes very true very true and if you're if you're if you want to enhance because i know i always want to enhance my connection i want to make it deeper and deeper and then you know i would love to like you know be able to see some people are clairvoyant where they could see the different light energies and you know i have i have strength in many different areas you know very strong you know areas but you know I, w I would love to dip into other areas also, like for people who want to enhance their ability to connect even further with the divine, what are some things people can do to actually enhance their ability to connect? Right. Well, first of all, um, you know, things like clairvoyance, um, a thing to remember with them is it's always a byproduct of the evolutionary process. It's not a goal unto itself. Mm hmm. Because someone may see a couple of colors or whatever, it doesn't mean they're doing any better than you. Right. You know, in classes we have this, sometimes people come in and say, oh, I saw the blue white fire. And then the person next to them says, I didn't see anything this week. I guess I'm not doing so good. And that's totally not true. Right. Uh, some come in with certain talents or sensitivities. And yes, it is something that can be learned over time. But the most important thing is to work with the energies. So one of the, one of the key areas we say is if you're not already meditating, start yes don't do it like you know two hours uh once every sunday you know right daily you know that the dalai lama actually asked many years ago decades ago the science community to kind of i know you may know about these studies about the effects of the lamas on their meditations and they mm -hmm. call these uh, olympic meditators because right. many of them accumulated like 60 thousand hours of meditation <laughs> that's, a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of meditation right? and they noticed even physiologically there was fundamental differences and the, the gentleman the doctor that was doing the study was saying the best way i can describe this is imagine you were eating a delicious apple mm -hmm. and you take a bite of this delicious apple and there are certain chemistry sensations that are going on in the brain well these monks were like on this constantly because mm -hmm. of the meditation and then when they went into meditation it went even more off the charts wow they basically physiologically determined that if you meditate 30 minutes every day sincerely for three months there is a discernible physiological change in your brain yes so you can actually change the rhythm but the key is consistency mm -hmm. so what we recommend even if it's a shorter meditation 20 minutes i wouldn't do any less than that right um, do it every day, just like brushing your teeth, you know, right. don't do it at the end of a long, oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to meditate now. You don't do it. Then you do it when you're alert, when you're fresh. Yes. When you can make it sort of the centerpiece. I know the two things people tell us about meditation when they try having trouble is number one, I can't concentrate or number two, I don't have time. Right. The time one, I kind of say, oh, okay. If meditation is your one on time, one on one time with God, with the divine, are you saying you don't have time for God? Are you saying, God, I'm so busy, but I promise next Tuesday, but it's just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it ain't going to work too well, right? Yeah. And if you have trouble concentrating, again, that's the mental muscle. Concentration right. is one of the fundamental keys of the mystical path. There's a whole energy around concentration. It comes through as a lemon yellow. Yeah. Barbara started to teach me to kind of hone a little bit my gifts more and uh, the teaching the first thing she actually focused on and that after years of other training was concentration right the ability to stay 
focus. So if right. you do have the monkey mind, which many of us do, right? You can quiet those monkeys, give them the bananas they want to do something, yeah. you know? get them to calm down and get that mind that's still place and your ability to focus right. on what you're doing. So meditation, daily meditation is the number one thing we would recommend. There are a variety of meditations. I love the divine light meditations because it's a whole art form. Mm -hmm. you, know, you decide, okay, I'm going to work on love today. I'm going to work on peace. I'm going to work on prosperity. You decide ahead of time kind of what you want to focus on. So the meditations become very specific yeah. and then start to see the results. It gets even, of course, much more encouraging. I always like the the chakra bowls and the vibrations and the sounds that come from each of the different chakra bowls for each chakra. And I always, it seemed to be very relaxing and very, um, I seem to connect really well with the divine when I do that. I feel like for some reason, the, the sound therapy that comes from those chakra bowls plays a huge impact in my life. Now, is there, a, is there a reason for that? Those, those different vibrations that come from each bowl that come that represents each different chakra? Well, you know, sound and music even more so are, ex you know, when done correctly, music can be a very uplifting experience. It could also be kind of a degrading experience. Yes. Of mm -hmm. how it's used. But because it kind of goes right into the heart, you know, into the soul kind of, of course, the intellect's involved. Yeah. Uh, it has this tremendous uplifting quality. And there are, again, this is getting into intricate things here, but there are spiritual energies connected to tone. Right. For example, if you were to go to a concert in the higher astro, higher spiritual worlds, you would see the concert as well as hear it because there would be these musical thought forms that would start forming. You know? right. Now, if you also associate well to sound, what we might recommend is what we call singing the ohms. You know, mm -hmm. where you are kind of the bowl, if you want to call it that. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, again, and you do it, you focus at the center. And that really helps to clear the mind because, again, you know, especially if we've had a full day, sometimes it can be a little difficult to do that. Right. Lighting candles with intention, don't leave them unattended. Yeah. But lighting, a, let's say, a pink candle if you're going to work with love, that's right. conducive. Uh, crystals have also. Now, again, we don't mean like gazing into a crystal ball and say, who will I marry now? You know, not like that. <laughs> but using it as like a like a lens to help the light to move in. So yeah. there are some tools, but we want to, we, we, we caution people, be too careful about too many props. Right. A lot of people try to, you know, because there's a difference between the psychic and the mystical and the mystical is more really a much more internal process. It's the, your, it's the discipline of you. Yes. And as you build that, things things grow. But creating a, a conducive environment through sound, through aroma, you know, having beautiful incense, you know, incense going. Also, we recommend keeping altars. You mm -hmm. know, it's a little sacred space that no one else is handling. It's not like, oh, look at all these nice things on your altar. You know, that, that it's sort of for you, you know. Yeah. Uh, that is also very helpful. And if you can, if you're lucky enough to have a meditation space. Yeah. I had a meditation chair for 25 years. It wasn't right. always the same space, but boy, I sat in that chair and it was like a rocket ship. I was already in the state. It was yeah. rad. My brother came once and says, you got to ditch that chair. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <not fun." You> <laughs> and I did eventually, because literally it was, it was just destroyed, but yeah. I, even I have now, it, I haven't put that many years into it. And I don't feel quite the same as I did when I was in that chair. Right. And some people wear certain clothing that wear meditation clothes. Yeah. Because it has vibration. And by the way, the clothes you wear affect your aura. You're wearing this beautiful pink. That's yeah. enhancing your auric field. Right. You know, that's adding. It, there is a connection to the auric colors and the colors you have in your home and the colors you wear. Right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Now, you have a, a wonderful program. Can you tell us about that program that you offer? Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's called the Seven Spiritual Arts Program. And it's based um, on, you know, decades of Barbara's clairvoyant experiences. We put together, we follow this tradition called the Kingdom of Light Teachings, which is 4,000 years old, uh, and, but has also been modernized. It's not exactly as it was taught 4,000 years ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these and those. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but the idea is, for example, the seven liberal arts, right, that we study at school. Basically, the idea of the liberal arts was to, it's not a specific trade, right? It's to train the mind. Right. To intellectually think in terms of prepare for the intellectual rigors of life. Right. Okay, I have this challenge here, I have this opportunity. How do I discern this? How do I calculate this? How do I put this together? That's what the seven liberal arts were designed to do. Right. Seven Spiritual arts is to offer these seven unique arts that help you prepare for the spiritual rigors of life. Right. That when you're dealing with life, you're not only handling it intellectually, you're handling or emotionally, you're handling it spiritually. And there are several courses, more than eight, uh, seven courses in the program, but the arts include the aura, healing, karma reincarnation, the hierarchy, uh, the consciousness and the mind. Right. Uh, shall we say that we call the spiritual keys of living applying spiritual truths and then our our most recent book was about the whole spiritual worlds themselves the big big picture of metaphysics why are you even on this path to begin with right and, and that's what we help people guide them through the foundation course is the change your aura because that teaches the meditation throughout the whole program um but again to get good at something, it takes a while. You know, I used to play a lot of classical piano and I, for a little while I was teaching. I remember one guy was getting married and he wanted to impress his fiance with a piece to learn. And hmm. he thought he could learn this like out of nothing. So no, you <laughs> piano first, you can't just learn this piece. You know, I know it's her favorite piece, but <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work. We tried it for three months. It didn't work. It wasn't enough time, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you had to build it up over time in the two years that it takes to go through the program you get really really good at it plus it does help in your own spiritual unfoldment and right. handling all the aspects of life it's a it's a very exciting program we've been teaching it for many years and again based on a lot a lot of knowledge and also our books we're writing now are each each book is like a different course so the more more recent one we did heaven your spiritual evolution that's about the big picture Right. Next year, we're coming out with a 25th anniversary of Change Your Aura. This is kind of our, our bestseller book um, with some new chapters and all of that. Yeah. Which teaches the world, you know, what we do. We meditate with divine light. Yeah. Uh, so it it is, an, it is a, actually a very ancient, you know, in the ancient Greek days, they called these the mystery schools. Right. Because you, first of all, it wasn't easy to join. It was a high bar to cross to get in there. And if you did, it was kind of like saying you joined the Navy SEALs. It was a very elite group of people. Right. Um, they taught you the mysteries of life. And um, what's so nice now is this mystical tradition is getting re-energized. It was started in the 20th century, even a little bit in the 19th, now here in the 21st. And it's only going to get more. People are going to demand it more because more people are growing or awakening now than ever before. Right. And as the hires that share with us, there's never been a better time to grow spiritually than today. So yeah. if there's one message I would want to leave is, you know, make sure if you've had your awakening, make sure you make your spiritual growth an even higher priority in your life because it can lead you to extraordinary places. Yes. Yes. That's excellent. I, I Now, where can people find um, the course? Where, what is your website that, that they have to go to? Um, Great. It, well, the organization is Spiritual Arts Institute. Mm -hmm. We're here in Encinitas, California, which is near San Diego. We have a center here. So if you happen to be local, come visit us. I know you're in, in New Jersey, but yeah, maybe get out west someday you know, or I'll make it out east. Yeah. I would love to come there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, but we've been doing a, we have a full video conferencing system. We've been doing it since 2006, long before the Zoom era. So you can join from anywhere in the world. Oh, uh, the excellent. website is spiritualarts.org. Excellent. Excellent. Now your books, where can people find your books? The books are everywhere, right? They're in bookstores, of course, on Amazon, online. Um, we have five of them right now, or five core ones. The Change Your Art, Change Your Life, Karma and Reincarnation, Communing with the Divine, um, the Heaven and Your Spiritual Evolution, and the Healing Power of Your Aura. So all these follow the same principles. They're part of the seven arts courses. We got two more in the works right now, one on consciousness and the other on the, the heart center, the, the applying spiritual laws of life. Yeah. And then the, the series will be complete. And uh, um, 
yeah, we have a lot of work to do right now. We're, we're busy writing right now <laughs> <laughs> on top of teaching. That's <laughs> yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's great so they can actually they can join your your institute not just you know if they're not local they could they can they can connect yeah. and they can just yeah. interact you know through virtual and right. they can find your books everywhere you know including right. your website or on amazon or in bookstores so it's it's easy access that to, to find exactly you. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And you get notes and audio files. There's a whole training. We have breakout groups. We, we've trained faculty so the support people involved. We also have single events. We're, we're, we're redoing our website. Well, probably when the, this is shown, the, the website will be there. But we have also single workshops. Mm -hmm. in, in June of 2024, we'll be doing a book tour with the Change Your Aura so um, oh, excellent. maybe we'll be in your city. I don't know. <laughs> oh, if you do, I want you to contact me so yeah. I can come. Okay. Definitely. Right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Definitely. So there's lots of opportunities, whether a single event or you really want to dive into the training. Now, the by the way, the foundation course is six weeks. So what we say is try us out for six weeks, you know, and if you like what you're experiencing, then you can go on to the whole program. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's great. I, I love this. This is very exciting. I'd love to have you back on the show because I'd love to, you know, talk more about maybe re reincarnation and other yeah. ish, you know, other areas that, you know, I think would be great for our listeners to learn about. So I, I'd love oh, to that, come back on the yeah, show. I'd love to come back. Yeah. Reincarnation would be a good one to yeah. think that, boy, we've been here before and we'll be back here again. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and that's okay it's not a bad thing <laughs> right yes <laughs> says, oh this is my last lifetime i'm not coming back <laughs> <laughs> they usually say it in a frustrated tone too <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well life could be you know life is not always a bold I know, choice, I know. So. <laughs> well the only thing i'll say there now is maybe a teaser is we all have a history you yes. know but this is um this this life is like a chapter in our book of life Yes. And things have been in motion even before we were born, yes. people, situations. So even if sometimes things are not always pleasant, if there may be a karmic reason, especially if it's related to family or very close things, look at it from a different perspective rather than say, oh, I feel frustrated or angry about this. Maybe ask, is there something I need to see about this that I'm not seeing? Is there a bigger story going on here? Right. And that will help you deal with the karmic. There's nothing, we all have unfinished business and there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't want to leave this earth with that same unfinished business. Right. It does get a little more frustrating the next time around. We want to make sure we take care of it. There's a tremendous liberating feeling with that. Sometimes we've gotten taken care of uh, karmic situations, didn't even know they were karmic, but the situation just got a lot better. Right. And worked it out. But again, with a little more knowledge, um, we can focus on it even more. That's a huge area of karma and reincarnation. You know, yeah. really fascinating. It exists individually, it exists on a country level. And guess what? There's world karma. Yeah. So it's, itself is in a karmic scenario. Yeah. And a lot of world karma is in play right now, which is accounting for some of the world dramas going on right now. Right. And how we handle these dramas do affect how the future of our civilization, <laughs> our yeah. children, our children's children. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. That'll be another, another, another time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd love to tap onto that in a, in another uh, episode. Definitely. This has been wonderful. Dimitri, I, I've had a, 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 um, a world of knowledge, you know, um, put upon me today and <laughs> I thank you very much for everything, you know, um, it really is, is nice to, to learn more about the, the spiritual of the divine and how it could have such a positive impact in our lives and how, you know, hopefully we've encouraged others to really not look so much ar around the earth part, but realize that we are spiritual beings in earth and right. maybe to take a step back and try to, you know, think on a higher level and then connect with that higher level. And, you know, when you do connect, you know, a lot of wonderful things happen and your life does do it changes and, and it and improves and you start to see life in a whole different aspect that you never did before, an enlightening aspect. And uh, and uh, so I commend you for, you know, teaching this to others and showing people how to get started and how to enhance themselves and how to 
change and improve their lives overall. Oh, great. Well, thank you. And thank the good work you're doing to get the word out. <laughs> it's not <laughs> easy. People think, oh, it's simple to put on a show. No, it really is. <laughs> There's a lot no. involved. <laughs> there is a lot involved there is a lot involved for sure for sure oh, you're putting your time and energy into this helping others so good job <laughs> oh, thank you thank you so much it's been a pleasure having you on this show okay all right thanks again all right you have a great day okay we will do